Well, the stromus macaronime is a, is a rare disease, you know, and again, probably no more than 25,000 or 35,000 uh, patients have wildness rooms, you know, in, in, the, in the country at any given time. So there, there is something that we really do not understand very well in terms of wildness rooms. I think a lot of the research that is being done is all in the genomic aspect of things, the biological aspect of things, the clinical trials, you know, and, 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 and that's the way we move around, um, you know, as, as physicians and as clinical researchers. Uh, but there's an aspect of, of the care of patients with Waldenstrom's that I think um, we need to understand a little bit better too. You know, really, you know, how do we treat them? You know, um, how many times patients with Waldenstrom's, you know, look for help in the emergency room? How many times they look for help uh, and they need to be hospitalized because of the disease? And, and how much of this really drives the expense of the care? That we, provide, that we provide to, to these patients, you know. So are there treatments that are induced, inducing higher costs because of uh, hospitalization, side effect management, terminal, you know, terminal illness, care, and things of that nature? So all this is really an open field. Really, there's very little uh, out there on this. Um, so what we were thinking on is kind of looking at large databases to understand this a little bit better. So we were looking into... Um, you know, the Veterans Affairs database, we were looking into, um, there's a premier database for uh, 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 inpatient and outpatient services. So we, we were looking at different databases to try to get, gather some data on this and understand this a little bit better. So I think based on all this, um, we need to acknowledge that really um, the expense of taking a care of a patient with Waldenstrom's goes beyond of uh, providing a medication. Um, it has to do with toxicity. It has to do with admissions to the hospital, has to do with, you know, hospice care, has to do with palliative care. Um, and again, our interest is just, is just studying in, the, in this field. I think this is going to be um, a very important aspect in the future, specifically because um, as more treatments are coming up and all those treatments are actually almost equally effective, then, then we need to understand these other aspects of the care in a better manner. Just to give an example, if we think about the classic treatments that we provide to patients with Waldenstrom's, you know, Bendamastin and Rituximab, or Bortezomib and Rituximab, or Ibrutinib plus minus Rituximab, all these treatments are almost equally effective. When we think about the response rates, anywhere between 90 and 100 percent, so we think about major response rates, anywhere between 70 and 80 percent, and we think about very good response rates, anywhere between 20 and 30 percent, and all these regimens have very similar efficacy rates. You know, so efficacy actually in Waldenstrom's is not uh, really the problem. You know, so we need to, when we make decisions with patients at this time, has to do with, you know, so what side effects, you know, um, are we concerned about? Are we worried about the 1% leukemia uh, development risk with chemotherapy? Are we concerned about the 5% neuropathy risk with bortezomib? Are we concerned about the 5 to 10% risk of AFib, you know, with atrial fibrillation, with, with BTK inhibitors? Right, so that's one way of deciding. But also, we decide as like, is your insurance going to cover this? You know, how much of the insurance is going to be covering this? What is going to be the copay and the out-of-pocket expense for the patients? So those are other aspects that we typically do not talk about, and really, there's very little research on. So you know, does it matter that a patient needs to be admitted? You know, for for potential problems associated with these specific treatments, does it matter that you know how much of, of taking care of a specific side effect, how how expensive that is? down the road and how many times is that going to happen? So all this is just a very early stage of trying to understand, you know, what goes beyond uh, an efficacy rate or what it goes beyond of a, you know, progression free survival or what goes beyond an overall survival. I, I think this is a very important aspect of the, of the research that we have not been really looking too much uh, until fairly recently. But I really also hope that this initial interest, you know, doesn't, doesn't die on right there. I mean, I, I hope this gives way to other um, areas of investigation that will look, you know, deeper into how do we treat these patients? How do we make our treatments more cost effective in trying to look for the, the best of patients, patients um, that, you know, need to live, should live longer, should live better, you know, uh, and, and should not spend too much money, you know, obtaining the same outcomes.